In this video, I want to talk about exponential regression models. Just like linear and quadratic equations, we can find regression models for an exponential equation. However, exponential regression models can be a bit more finicky than linear models. You will want to carefully decide how important it is to the model that the initial value is accurate and how much data to include in the calculation of a model because both of these things can change the model quite a bit. Let's look at an example. Here is the data for the global revenue of Beyond Meat. It's revenue in millions of dollars where T is the quarters since quarter two of 2017. Notice I did not include quarter one of 2017 because there's actually a slight decrease between quarter one and quarter two of 2017 and I didn't wanna throw off the model that much. For the rest of the data that we have, we have a nice smooth increase in the graph. We have a table of data showing us the time, the T value that's associated with that time, and capital R, which is the revenue. For example, quarter to 2017 is a T value of zero, that's our initial value, and the revenue is 5.6 for 5.6 million. Quarter three, 2017 is a T of one with revenue of 9.4. Quarter four, 2017 is a T value of two with revenue of 11.5. Quarter one, 2018, T value three, revenue 12.8. Quarter two, 2018, T value four, revenue 17.4. Quarter three, 2018, T value five, revenue 26.3. Quarter four, 2018 is T value six, revenue 31.5. Quarter one, 2019 is T value seven, revenue 40.2. Quarter two, 2019 is T value eight, revenue 67.3. And quarter three, 2019 is T value nine and revenue 92.0. I've taken this data and plotted it in Desmos using T sub one for the first column and capital R sub one for the second column. Now we're gonna find a discrete exponential growth model for this. We're gonna let R be the global revenue in millions of Beyond Meat and lowercase t be the quarters since quarter two of 2017. The basic form of this model would be R of t equals a b to the t. And we're gonna look at four possible models we could use to fit the data for the revenue because I wanna show you how much variation there can be. For the first model, we'll call it model A. We wanna find a regression for the model letting both the initial value and the growth factor change. So our model would be r sub one tilde a b raised to the t sub one. Let's take a look. Capital R sub one tilde a b raised to the t sub one power. Okay, we immediately see a model appear on the screen. It does go through some of the data points, some are around the model that we have, and this gives us parameters of lowercase a equals 4.52337, and lowercase b equals 1.39558. I'm gonna round both of those to three decimal places. So the initial value would be 4.523, and the growth factor would be 1.396. Let's go ahead and write down that information. So our model is capital R of T equals 4.523 left paren 1.396 right paren raised to the T. So that's our model. It's a fairly good fit. You can see that the initial value is incorrect. We have an initial value here of 4.523 and we know from the data that the initial value is actually 5.6. Now if that's not bothersome to you, if you like the fact that the model is fitting the data and not the initial value, then this is perfectly fine and we can make predictions off this model. In fact, we're going to predict the revenue at the end of quarter 4, 2020. And you may want to run the table down just a little bit more to see what value of t that would be. Quarter four of 2019 would be t value of 10. So then we would go quarter one of 2020, quarter two of 2020, quarter three of 2020, and quarter four of 2020, which would be times of 11, 12, 13, and 14. So we're really looking for values for r of 14. So here we would calculate capital R of 14, which gives us 482.861 million dollars in revenue for the fourth quarter 
of 2020. Before we go any further, I, I know what's on the next page and we're gonna to wanna to compile this data. So let's go ahead and do that for this particular case. So for model A, we were choosing A and B and we used nine data points. Our model was R of T equals 4.523, left paren 1.396, right paren to the T power. And our revenue was 482.86 million. Okay, let's move on to the second model. In the second model, we're going to force the initial value to be correct. So rather than leaving A as a parameter to be decided by the model, we're going to put in 5.6 and then see how well the model fits the data and see what that model is. So let's go over to Desmos and just make that one change. So in my Desmos model, I'm going to backspace over A and write 5.6. Now what you'll immediately see is the model has shifted slightly to now go through a y-intercept of 5.6. Like the other model, this one hits some of the points and has points scattered both to the left and right of it. The growth factor in this case is 1.359. Let's go and write this model in our notes. So this model is capital R of T equals 5.6 left parentheses 1.359 right parentheses to the t. So here we forced the y-intercept to be the actual initial value of the data. Now let's predict the revenue for Q4 2020 based on this model. So again we're going to calculate r of 14. We're putting in 14 for t and we get out 597.8 38, or let's just round to 0.84. Notice that that is a considerably bigger number than our last model, and that is how much of a difference it can make to force the initial value through a higher value. When the initial value is higher, then the entire model is based on that value and results in higher numbers, so that tiny little change is what shifted the data this much. Let's go ahead and compile that in our table. So model B has a forced initial value and nine data points. It's R of T equals 5.6, left parentheses, 1.359, right parentheses to the T, and the revenue in millions was 597.84 much bigger number. Okay, now I thought we'd just experiment by using one less data point. And this is gonna be a really interesting result, I think. So we're gonna go back to our model and remove the data point for t equals nine from the table of values. And then just do that original regression model of r1 tilde a, b to the t1. So moving over to Desmos, I'm going to delete the last data point. So let's say we had made this model one quarter earlier with one quarter less data. So now we have eight data points. I'm also gonna change my model back to using the lowercase a value instead of 5.6. And so the result is an initial value a of 4.9187, or let's just say 4.919, and a growth factor of 1.3764, or let's just round that to 1.376. Here we can see again that the model looks pretty good. It goes through some of the data points. It's got some data points on the left and the right of it. It's an increasing exponential function. Let's go ahead and write our model down. It's capital R of T equals 4.919 left parentheses 1.376 right parentheses to the T power. And again, we want to calculate what is R of 14 if we use this model. And here we have a value of 429.076 or let's just say 0 0.08 million. So adding that to our table for compilation, the model here with eight data points and choosing A and B with the regression is 4.919, left paren 1.376, right paren to the T, with an outcome for Q4 2020 revenue of 429.08. And look how much lower that one is than the other two. 
Crazy, right? Okay, the final thing we're gonna do is force the initial value on this eight data point model. So now we're going to just use the 5.6 instead of the A value. We'll run over to Desmos, change that A value back to 5.6. So now we're forced through the initial value. There's only one parameter for the model to find and that's the growth factor. So it finds a growth factor of 1.3517 or simply 1.352. Put that in our notes. Model here for model D is R of T equals 5.6 left paren 1.352 right paren to the T. And if we calculate R of 14 here, we get 488.4792 or I'm just going to say 0.48. And so finally, let's put that in our table. So our fourth model, model D, is R of T equals 5.6, left paren 1.352, right paren to the T. And it's giving us a result of 488.48 million. That's quite a variety of revenues that we have. Everything from $429 million to $597 million. That's quite a budget difference for the fourth quarter of 2020. In fact, if we were to plot all four of these models, you can see that the further out we go from the data, the more variation we have in these four models. On this graph, on the horizontal axis, we have the quarters since Q2 2017. And I've put a vertical line at quarter 14, which is the one that we've looked at in all four of these models. On the y-axis, we have revenue in millions of US dollars. And for all four models, which are graphed in dashed lines, the fit does look pretty darn good for the first nine data points. But as we move from the ninth quarter to the 14th quarter, the graphs spread further and further apart. This is why it's dangerous to predict values too far out in time for exponential models. There is so much variation simply from putting in one extra data point, removing a data point, or forcing the initial value. In fact, we often use a zone of prediction with boundaries on the prediction rather than one exact model. And so sometimes in scientific predictions, for example, like climate change models, you see this zone of prediction. It's not because the scientists don't know what the current data is, it's because the projections, the exponential model projections, have so much variability when you go a little ways out. Let me show you what this looks like in Desmos. Here in Desmos, I've actually graphed the different models and used an inequality to shade in the space between the uppermost graph and the lowermost graph. So that would be the space between 5.6 left paren, 1.352 right paren to the x, and 4.523 left paren, 1.396 right paren to the x. So this is what we call a zone of probability, a cone of probability. We think the revenue will be somewhere inside of this cone for the time after the data is known. Now, just one more note. You really don't want to use exponential regression unless you have several data points. In the previous example, you saw just how much variation there can be with we just removing or adding a data point. And so you want to use this carefully and remember that predictions are greater guesses as the model gets further out from the existing data. 